Question nine, this is also an induced EMF question. We have a small coil. Okay, la, small coil is this one. This setup, by the way, is also has been asked before in past years one. Place close to one end of a solenoid connected to a power supply. So the small coil is not connected to anything yet. Okay, this is my solenoid. The plane of the coil is normal to the axis of the solenoid. So what it's meant to say is that if I draw the center line, it will intersect this way. Lah. Okay, it is not tilted in any direction. Normal, normal. Okay, beautiful. Next. The power supply causes the current in the solenoid to change with time. So we can see that the current in the solenoid took two boxes, took this amount of time to increase from zero to hero, not hero, la, from zero to maximum value. And it also took two boxes to decrease and to turn off. The midpoint is T2 la, and T1. State Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction, level zero. So Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction is induced EMF. I like how they are marking all my <laughs> spelling wrong. It's directly proportional. Proportional to the rate of change of magnetic flux linkage. in a close conducting loop. Okay, this is the complete one. Let's see if they are as strict as I am. In this EMS, is proportional to the rate of change of magnetic flux. So generally, this is the minimum that you should write. Lah. Induce EMF directly proportional to the rate of change of magnetic flux. But uh, this is a complete one. It's flux linkage because I have a coil of many turns and then it has to be a closed conducting loop. Okay. Nothing special. Just normal stuff. Next. On axis 9.3, this one, sketch the variation of the EMF induced in the small coil. Okay, so EMF will only be induced if there is a change in current. Okay, so we talked about it just now. When the current changes, there's a change in flux. Because uh, B is proportional to I. Okay, and B is also proportional to flux. So, I is proportional to flux. So then, uh, if I want to find D flux DT, it is also proportional to DI DT, which is the gradient of this graph law. So the only time where di dt is not zero is t1 and t2. And this is a straight line. So the gradient of a straight line is constant. So my graph is going to look like this. Lah. t1, these two boxes will have reading. These two boxes will have reading. Everything else, no reading. So I think I will draw that one first. Zero, 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 Bloop. Because here there's no change in magnetic flux. So we time. Okay. Wow, four marks are more leh. Very nice. Much rather draw graph than write explanation. Okay. So next, think about the gradient. This gradient is positive. So this di dt is positive, and this di dt is negative. So they should have opposite polarity, right? If you want to be straight, 
like you really want to follow Faraday's law, although not compulsory, you can use negative deflux dt. So that means I have to negative this positive gradient become negative. So this one will be negative law. And then here would be positive. Is the exact value important? Nope. You have no way to know the exact value. Yay, four marks. <laughs> Very nice. Okay, start praying that this kind of question come up. Because I like to sketch graph. Sketch graph, many marks, easy work. Write explanation, need to brain the explanation and slowly write it out and make sure you don't miss important keywords. That one is a different skill set. So depending on who you ask and what kind of person you are, you may have preferences. But most people who choose physics uh, are science students. Uh, and science students are generally like, I want, I want the graph. Okay, where are the four marks? Did I cheated your feelings? Is it really four? Well, where should I put the marks? Okay, I'm just going to put it here. Don't look. Okay, so let's see. EMF equal to zero, except tin pulses at T1 and T2. Okay. So EMF equal to zero is here until here and here. So only the two boxes, two small boxes are, okay? Rectangular pulses center on T1 and T2 with two small square and one small square respectively. Ooh, is this only one? Yeah, wo. Wow. Zoom so big also, I cannot see. Okay, so this one is half a box. This one is half a box. So what did we learn here? During exam, we uh, really need to bring magnifying glass and stare at the graph. I don't already zoom in so big for us. So here to here is technically one box. Hi, yeah. Uh, so if this is one box, it means that the rate of change is faster. So this reading have to be double. Double of whatever you draw previously. And it cannot be two boxes. Goodness. So it has to be from half a box to the other half a box. You draw using pencil, please make sure you can see. Yeah. So half a box here. Wait, why, am I, why am I drawing? Must be blind. Maybe we need a smaller pen. Half a box here. You get the idea, Mom. Go and examine the graph. And see that the change only happens here to here. So it's not the whole of T1. It's part of T1. So we need to extend this zero reading more. Okay, sure. And double reading. Okay. Because the change is twice as fast, the time is half. Okay. EMF have opposite polarity. Yes, positive, negative, negative, positive, doesn't matter. And the magnitude of T2 is double the magnitude of T1. Oh, no wonder la, they give four marks. Makes sense, makes sense. Okay, can. So T1 and T2 is two small square and one small square. All right, and this is positive. I mean, if you choose 2cm, like, you can also choose 1cm and 2cm here. It's up to you, actually. I draw extra thick during exam. You don't draw so thick. Like. You just make sure that can tell that there is a line here. Can already. Okay. Do you need to do the dotted line up? But I'm doing this to kind of tell the examiner. It may not be accurate, but I understand what you want. 
As in, my graph may not be the best, but human drama. Okay, so half and half here. Mm. This one. EMF of T2, double EMF of T1. As long as opposite polarity, you are okay. Okay, there we go. Can you draw a solid line? Mm, I don't think they will minus mark for that case. But just make sure that when you draw your solid line, it's not too thick. Okay, so you're thinking, if can I draw a solid line? Yeah, you can. Dotted line also can. Don't draw also now, mind. But if you draw the dotted line, it's kind of like you're telling the examiner, hey, you know, I know it starts from half a box before T2 and half a box after T2. Hmm. So you got to examine the graph carefully. Let me move this aside so you can stare at the graph. And by examining the graph carefully, what I mean is... Oops, nah. This part here, one box. If you look at it, it looks uh, it looks symmetrical to me, but actually it is not. Okay, la, this is a very it's a typical mistake for students who do questions very fast, aka me. Okay, but if you do it slow and steady, you should be able to catch on that this is double of this. If not, you lose two marks, law. The time is wrong, and then the relative magnitude is wrong. You won't get zero. You just lose two marks. Okay, moving on to B. Small coil in A is now replaced by a Hall probe. So this is a very common trend in magnetic fields. They like to uh, see whether you are confused with Hall probe and induced EMF. So in Hall probe, you have a Hall voltage. It is not induced EMF. The Hall voltage is because all the positive charge go one side, all the negative charge go the other side. Okay, so... But the Hall voltage is also proportional to magnetic flux density. Um, and also induced EMF, okay, through a very through a long convoluted relationship, which is this one. This is equal to di dt, right? or at least proportional, lah, which is some constant. So induced EMF is proportional to the IDT. But induced EMF, because it's proportional to flux, EMF is flux. And also at the same time, flux is equal to BA. So from here, I can say EMF is proportional to magnetic flux as well, provided all the other things are constant, lah, like area uh, is constant. Okay. So this means uh, there is a change, but it's, mm -hmm. how do I explain? Induced EMF is proportional to the change. But VH is proportional to the magnetic flux density. Okay, because if you look here, did I write wrong? Oh yeah, of course I write wrong. This E is negative the flux dt, so... Flux is BA, so E is proportional to negative D. Hang on, I'll frame everything. Negative D BA over DT. So if your area is constant, I can say it's proportional to negative DB DT. A constant. Kick the A away. Make sense? So although they are related, they are not the same thing commonly asked here is uh, the difference between the voltage in the small coil, which is induced EMF. And for induced EMF, the induced EMF is directly proportional to whether the magnetic field change or not. So this one exists if the flux changes and flux will change if the magnetic field changes. So the only time it changes is here when the current increase and here when the current decrease but hall probe is to measure or detect b 
So the core probe is used to measure magnetic flux density. Okay, so one is measuring change. One is measuring whether it exists or not. So the current I in the solenoid varies again in figure 9.2. Sketch the graph to show how the whole voltage will look like. So where did the magnetic field increase? Okay, I'm going to just copy the graph here so we can stare at it. Okay. Zoom out a bit. Okay, so we don't have any magnetic field or because there's no current until one box before T1. So here to here is going to be 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. And then there's no current, no magnetic flux, half a box after T2. So make sure you be as precise as possible, half a box after T2, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. All the way until the end. Okay. And then after that, it will increase to a constant value because the magnetic field here is constant. I constant, B constant, BH constant. All right. So I guess we could just draw the same thing. To you, la. you want to increase until well. I'm just going to increase until here. And this one should be a straight line, it can, because it's directly proportional. So it should follow the same shape. You have a ruler, la. I just freehand draw. If I use the shape tool, it will take forever to do this question. Something like this. Okay. Two marks, this one. So essentially, you are giving marks for copying the graph. Lot. Okay, so VH is zero, rises to a constant, non zero value between T1 and T2 can now. So they are very generous. La. They give you a slightly bigger range. Before 0, before T1. So change at T1 shows as two small square white. Nah. T1, two small square white. Here to here got change. After that, no change. La. The change is only from here to here. Okay, two small squares. And then change in two, T2 shown as one small square white. Okay, no? This one is half here to here, half. Okay, that's all. Six marks, two graphs. All right, very different graph. VH will have reading if there's magnetic field. Induced EMF will only have reading if there is a change in magnetic field. And the magnetic field will change only if the current change. That is the whole idea of this question line. And that's it.